Hello, everyone. Welcome to, to, the, to the session today. Um, my name is Kate Dudson, and I'm Joint Chief Exec of an organization called COSMIC. We're based down in the southwest of England. And um, hopefully you're on the right uh, webinar today. We're going to be talking about the world of online selling. And what I'm really hoping that you get out of the session today is lots of inspiration, ideas and thoughts around how you can either get into this world of online selling or just improve what you're doing. So that's the plan. Um, before um, I get into the detail of this stuff, I'd like to um, just remind you that the session today is being brought to you by BT Skills for Tomorrow. And we've just got a quick video from Karenna. Sorry, I got I started off all right, didn't I? And I got the name wrong. Karenza Jennings, um, who's the head of uh, BT Skills for Tomorrow, just to welcome you into the programme. Hello, and welcome to BT Skills for Tomorrow. My name's Karenza Jennings, and I'm BT's Digital Impact Director. I run Skills for Tomorrow. We actually set up the programme a few months ago and is designed to help communities all over the UK in different ways to develop their confidence online and to develop their digital skills. Now more than ever with COVID-19, it's really, really important that we're here to support you. We want to help you develop your confidence. We want you to help, to help you reach your digital routes to market. We want you to help promote your products and services to your customers. And we really, really want you to succeed. We've put together this programme of webinars, which are completely free for you and for your, for your co-workers. We want to help inspire you to start using some of the collaboration tools that will genuinely help you save time and money and help you get your routes to market quicker. It's really important that you feel confident with digital tools and that you're able to communicate with your co-workers really effectively. Working remotely is a challenge for all of us. I'm working from home right now. It's a challenge for absolutely all of us. And you just have to adapt. You have to adapt really quickly and, and turn to valuable advice where you can get it. We've been talking to a huge number of small businesses ourselves through our partners, Small Business, small business Britain, and also Google Digital Garage. We've been listening to the way that people are follow, um, facing all kinds of different challenges and problems at the moment. We're trying to respond rapidly with the types of help, advice and support that we feel is most useful to you. So we're starting with some key tools around collaboration, digital marketing, and also how to optimize your uh, business model. We want to help you take your business online so that you can discover your customers and that they can discover you. It's really important as well that you open up communication channels with your customers. Now more than ever, it's the human side of business. That's what matters. And that's what we're trying to help you do. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to hashtag skills for tomorrow. I really hope that you learn something valuable. I hope you learn some good top tips and I hope you tell others about us. We're here to help you. It's BT Skills for tomorrow. Thank you. Great. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little introduction from Karenza. I got her name right this time, so that's that's good. Um, I'm keen to to know where everyone's come from today, and I can see in the poll there, uh, if you filled out the poll, that we've got a great kind of response today from the southwest. Brilliant, uh, which is lovely, but also a really lovely response from London. So hello, everyone from London and the southeast. And then we've got a few from Northeast, Northwest, Midlands, so welcome to you all as well. I'd be keen also if you're able to put into the chat your business and, and who you're representing today. So if you're happy just to type into the chat there your business and either your web address or your Facebook link or Instagram link, just so that we all know who you, who you are um, and who knows, we might be able to buy something from each other by the end of the session. So, uh, so do, please, do please pop those into there. So, as I say, what we're going to do today is we're going to really start focusing in on, um, on, on selling online, what it really means um, and what it's all about. And I'm going to start my slides um, by just kind of, I've given you an introduction to who I am, so I'll just pop those over. Um, but just to give you an idea, we're going to talk about really uh, the technology starting blocks, so the key things we need to make the technology work well for us. We're then going to talk a bit about forms and bookings and how important those are in this sort of post-COVID environment. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on how can we supercharge that revenue? How can we start to build subscriptions, membership services, those sorts of things to bring in recurring revenues? So I hope that kind of gets your interest and gets you going. 
Where I want to start with this, though, is, is kind of just a reflection on what's happened in the last few months. And we're all very familiar now with what's been going on. But we know that pretty much around that second week in March, we stopped buying stuff. We all stopped buying stuff. We went into a crisis mode. And then suddenly, a few weeks later, we all started buying stuff again, but we all bought it online. So what I want all of us to start thinking about is how can we now get into that trend? There's been some real winners and losers. This, this report came out just on Monday, actually, um, from, uh, from the RBS, just saying, actually, we're now starting to see a lot of bounce back in sales and actually almost to the point of some pre-COVID sales, which is great news. However, it's great news if you're in certain businesses, if you're in DIY, internet or food, those sorts of things are starting to pick back up. But actually, it's tougher if you're in the world of, you know, clothes, books, those kinds of pieces. So, you know, I think there is really good opportunities for us all to be thinking about how we fit into those winners and losers spaces. There's also a shift from spending to from experiences into actually buying more physical things again. So if that's your bag, it's something to really think about and move forward with now. So I just want you to do another quick poll. You're not going to get away without doing anything today. I've got quite a few polls in here. Um, and the poll we're going to run is just a quick one to say, when was the last time you bought something online? So if you can head on to the poll and just start to have a go with that. Was it yesterday? Was it today, this morning? Was it last week? Or don't you buy stuff online? So if you can have a quick, a quick join that poll and have a go with it. I can see people are doing that. I'm just going to give you a few more seconds to click on that one to see. Brilliant. Oh, got a bit of movement there last minute. Lovely. So the majority of people Yep, the majority of people bought something yesterday. Some people last week, some this morning, that's great. I think it's a really interesting reflection that the most popular time of day to buy something online, and this stat comes from just pre the Christmas period, but the most popular time to buy something online, 5.40 in the morning. And that's typically those people that wake up and go, oh, I've forgotten to buy something for someone. Let's just buy it now. So the great thing about selling online is it does allow people to buy whatever time of day that suits them. And even if you're in the B2B world, the business to business world, now digital is so much more important. We're seeing that actually people want to and, and wish to move to a digital transaction and a digital interaction. So this isn't just business to consumer world. And all of us would like self-service wherever possible. So we're now seeing the real growth of live chat. We're seeing orders being placed on apps. Prior to the COVID environment, we would see generally purchases made on desktops or laptops, bigger purchases, but now we're seeing bigger purchases made through apps. And, and we're seeing that rise and rise through that ability and comfort in using the mobile environment. So let's go back to basics and say, what do we need? What's right for us? We've got a whole load of things we've got to think about. Our website, our hosting, our domain name. Is it a good name? Is it good enough for us? Does it work well for the search engines? Have we got good content? Which video conferencing software are we using? Do we need an online learning platform? What marketing are we doing? What e-newsletters are we using? What social are we using? Do we need a forum? All of these questions can sometimes be banging around your head. We haven't got time to go through all of those today, but I'm going to pick up on some of those and hopefully they'll solve some of your problems. And the first place I want to start is actually the website itself. Is your website good enough? Or is it one that you feel you're making an excuse for when people go onto it? If it's not good enough, is it time just to have a quick go and build something new? 
There's some basic sites out there that are quite quick and easy to do. Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, those are quite quick, quite cheap, simple to get live. If you want something a bit more complex, you can think about WordPress. You might need to get a web developer or a designer to help you do those. But pretty much these sites you can get on and do, and do quickly. But also, if you have got product to sell particularly, what about getting yourself onto some of the marketplaces? Amazon, eBay, what about Not on the High Street, Etsy, Foki, all of those kinds of sites. Although they charge commission, what they're charging that for is their amazing ability to market you. So sometimes we have to kind of make a decision on that, but actually getting your product out there could be the quickest way of doing that via a marketplace. Or we put in our own website, or have we got a website already that we need to put a plugin into? Something like WooCommerce or Magento that we can do that piece. And usually at that level, we need to get a web developer or a designer in involved. So I hope the first kind of message you're getting from this is you can do so much of this stuff yourself. The other product that's really great, I think really cool to use is a, is a product called Shopify. And this is really fast and easy to use and is built in with a great e-commerce platform and a great ability to share out to social media as well. So have a look at some of those, give them a go. If you've got a, a WordPress site, then as I say, look at some of the, uh, the plugins you can use. I've just shared some with you here as well. So just start, start uh, getting some ideas around that. But if you just got a current website that you're quite happy with, one of the challenges that I would love to give you is check it out. Use a product like Uber Suggest that's free to use, put in your domain name and just ask it to run a little search for you and see how well is it doing on the search engines. Is there anything broken? Is there anything that's taking too long to load? Because all of those things will be a factor in stopping people buying from your website. So if you've got a website, audit it. If you haven't got a website, get one and get one live now. When we're thinking about getting our products online, one of the things I've seen over the years is that people get really tired when they're starting to put up their products of making sure that it looks the very best it can. So one of the things I'm really keen that you do is every single page that you have a product on, make sure it has the best photo you can provide for that and multiple photos. There's research to say that we buy more products that have 12 or more photos of that product. One photo isn't enough. So make sure you've got photos of detail, photos of action, unboxing photos, photos of all directions, all of those kinds of things, so that you get that sense from the customer of touching and feeling that product. And then in terms of the text itself, as much detail as you can possibly put in there. If I just give you an example here, what we want to see is lots of content. What we can't have is it saying, oh, it's the same as this oil, but it's got rose in it. That's not enough because the search engine is looking at that page specifically for that content. So, Think about getting all the detail, write it down as much as you can, get all that information in there. Make sure that your photos are, and, and your text and your tone differentiate yourself from, the, from your, from your um, competitors. So keep it in a, either in all in cool tones or all in hot tones. Make sure the backgrounds are similar so people feel that same experience every page they're on within there. The last reminder on there says about accessorizing, which is the idea of if you're selling the gin, make sure you sell the tonic or whatever is the equivalent in, in your industry. If you're selling sofas, sell the cushions. What is the opportunity you've got to upsell in that piece? So 
spend a bit of time thinking about those pieces on your website, get it right, build it well for yourself, and just crack on with that stuff. If, however, you're at the other end of the spectrum, you've got a basic website, but you only want to sell one or two things, I was working with someone recently that just wanted to sell a couple of t-shirts. Well, actually, we don't need to get a new website. We don't need to do that stuff. We can just go onto PayPal. We can just go onto a PayPal button. We can type in the price, the post and packaging, all of that sort of stuff. And we can then, uh, a little PayPal button will appear and we copy that code into our website and then automatically that little button will appear. Really quick and easy to do, no setup charges and it's done and dusted. So if you want to do this tonight, that's a quick way of doing it. However, just bear in mind that it doesn't give you a checkout cart. People are only buying one particular product. But as I say, it's a great way just to get going and testing this stuff. If you want to go bigger than that, then think about using some payment processes. Stripe and PayPal are two really easy ones to integrate into most websites. They both have very similar fee structures, so there's no real difference between both of them, and they're quite easy to integrate into, into most websites. There's a lovely one here called Go Cardless, which is really useful if you want to do subscriptions as well, if you want to pay, get people to pay you on a monthly basis. So have a look at some of those, get to feel which one is right for you. And also, if you are selling and delivering um, to someone or doing customer not present transactions, then think about buying one of these little card readers. PayPal here, the Square or the iZettle product, they're now about £20 each, they're not expensive. And very quickly, you can get either a contactless payment or you can do, as I say, uh, customer not present over the phone type payments as well. So. I hope those start to give you an idea around ways in which you can start taking payments um, online in that space. So let's move on to, to forms and bookings. And as I say, in this world now we're living in, we need to be able to take bookings quite quickly and easily. One of the products I really love is this product called Typeform. It's a simple and easy to use form, but it's really beautifully presented. And it's free to use, and you can create your form, you can create little branches, so if someone says yes here, you can then create something else down here, and you can integrate it with Stripe and take payments. So if you were, for example, doing some clothing or some retail, uh, some t-shirts or something like that, really easy to build that out as a form, Again, you can then just stick it on your website or you can send it out via email or via an e-newsletter to people to be able to buy straight away. We're seeing more and more of this that we need to pre-book appointments into places. And it's again, it's really useful, but it's also this post-COVID environment. So thinking about ways in which you can do bookings, there are loads and loads of apps that we can use. Here's a list of some of them. Again, have a click on these, see which ones suit you. But also, if you're using Office 365, generally, you've got it built into your system already. So part of Office 365 surfaces as a little web page, and you can set it up so that it shows your calendar, but only the available points. And someone can type in a date, they can book create a booking, and then that drops straight into your Microsoft calendar. If they then want to go and change that time, they can do that automatically as well. So it's a really helpful way, a quick way and a no cost way of getting bookings happening on your site or via links. If you haven't got uh, a Microsoft, then Calendly can do exactly the same thing, and that can work across Outlook, Google, or any of those products, and iCloud as well. So again, a really useful one to just have tucked away to use. There's also a lovely one called simplybook.me, um, which is a nice one because it's also really app-based. So, uh, so it's worth having a look at. And if you're in the sort of hairdressing or 
beauty or any of those sorts of industries, there's one that's been built that's specific for the industry that's called Uvatu. Um, and it's a really beautiful product. It's really worth having a little play with. I've only put this one in because I think it's lovely to see, um, to see fish and chips <laughs> and make us think about sunny days. So, but the, but the point of this is all industries need some form of booking now. And, um, and, and this, is, uh, this is a fish and chip shop in, in Falmouth, in, in Cornwall. And the system that they're using is a product called, the slide goes, goes over, called Prio Day. Prio Day is used by Greg's and other kind of big retailers as well. But it's a great app-based product and a website-based product. It allows you to put all of your uh, information up there to take book it, uh, to take payment and to take bookings for delivery. Um, so it's a really lovely product to use. Um, and if you're coming from a place where you want to think about this on a more of a town basis, then Prio Day actually has a fantastic interface for the whole town. So you could really start to look at actually reviving a town centre and get, get some interest um, from that basis as well. And my last little one um, in this piece is around uh, Lunchbox. Is the idea of this again is, is a one-off app. This is for food retailers, but again is this idea of doing web and app ordering, but also can do that phone to table piece that we're seeing more and more in restaurants now, where people are able to, uh, through a QR code, they're able to then see the menu, they can order off the menu, uh, and, then, and then they can pay from, from their app as well. So again, a really lovely product to have a look at. So that was just a little kind of overall piece around the, uh, your website and making sure the website is right. And then starting to think about actually what forms and how can we take bookings and take payments alongside bookings as well. I'm just gonna pause there for a second and just see how we're getting on. I'm looking through the chat. I've got one here from Claire, who's the Inner Sparkle Coach, which sounds fantastic, empowering women. That sounds brilliant. Um, does anyone else would like to put up a, a, a little uh, in the chat, a little bit about you, about your business and what you're doing? Or if anyone has any questions um, at the moment as well, please do, please do put them into the chat. But welcome to Claire um, on the chat there as well. So I hope everyone's okay. The last little bit I really want to cover is this idea of how do we actually supercharge our revenue? How do we start to whatever product or service that we're offering, how could we start to look at that in a way that creates recurring revenue? The challenge I'm gonna give you today is what can you turn into a subscription model? Currently, this is the fastest growing model out of any businesses. So all of us, I think, can have a go at this. The great thing about a subscription model is that our revenue builds, it builds slowly, but it builds over time and creates a predictable income that will continue to build as long as we continue to market. So it's a, it's a lovely model, it works really well for most of us. And what we're expecting as the value exchange is the customer is paying us either for a particular good or particular service and we send that to them. That's all a subscription model is. Whether it's a physical product whether it's, or whether it's a virtual product or a service, that's pretty much what a subscription model is. However, if we wanna bring that to the next level, then what we can think about is, do we also make them part of a club? Do we create membership? Therefore, do we have a community? Do we need forums? Do we start to build that community up? And we know, and research shows, that if we get people involved in a community, on average, they spend 20% more with us. So there really is value in getting that recurring revenue right and keeping people 
in a community and building that forward. And this is just a, a description of that, just an example of that, of moving people from registration and subscription up to that point of belonging and owning and the business value that grows alongside that. So these are some subscriptions. These are, I might be oversharing when I say this to you, but the subscription models that I belong to. So I get my coffee from Pact, I get my food from Gusto, I get Netflix and Amazon. I even get my flea treatment for my dogs from Itch, which is a monthly free ser uh, flea service, small laundry capsules, who give a crap, toilet paper, all of those subscription models are there and aimed at people who want to not to have to go shopping at the weekends, who want to get things done, dusted quickly, but want high quality stuff. My question to you is, how many subscription services do you use monthly? Are you like me and a bit of a crazy subscription user, or actually do you not have many at all? If you're able to, uh, to go into the poll and, um, and just give us an idea from there, Live. Yep, it's live now. Great. Okay. Um, so just, just give me an idea of how many you are uh, subscribing to. And as I say, including that, things like Spotify or Apple Music, uh, think about um, Amazon, but then also these ideas of other particular types of um, subscriptions for food and drink and those sorts of things. I'm keen for you also to add into the chat there um, what subscriptions you particularly like as well. Uh, so we can uh, give those a shout out as we're going through. I'm seeing at the moment that we've got a complete tie between one to three and four to eight. And actually 14% of you with none. That's really interesting. But actually, there's a, few, there's a few of us that are in that sort of 8 to 10 and 10 plus environment as well. But it seems to me the, the average is probably about five uh, between those that are, that are joining the poll. So that's great. If you are able to just put up onto, um, if you are able just to put up onto the, into the chat, any thoughts you've got around which um, subscriptions uh, you've got, that would be really lovely. So most of us are in that kind of subscription world. That's the kind of space that, that, that we need to be looking at. And um, I'm just going to pause and just see if I've got any here before we move on. So I'm just looking here. We've got a couple of questions. We've got one statement here. We've got um, Emmeline Fontine, who's uh, Digital Director of Kobo, which is great. So that's lovely. Welcome. Uh, welcome, Emily. Um, there's someone here that's saying, I'm starting a food business from my home kitchen. Uh, which, which site will help me sell best? And actually, I think from your perspective, um, the, the critical one there for you would be the lunchbox. That would be a great one um, to have a look at and, and play with. Um, so have a look at that one. But also, if you just want something basic in the first instance and free, type form would be a really good one just to trial and test. There's a great kind of concept in our digital world that we're living in is this idea of try and fail. Be prepared to fail first time. Fail quick, fail cheap, work out what didn't work, and then try again. And so if you can do that with something cheap like Typeform, work out the goods and the bads, and then move on to something like Lunchbox that you need to put in quite a lot of content and information into, then that way you'll do your learning earlier in the, in the stage. So I hope that's helpful for you. Just check if we've got, um, oh, so we've got Adobe, someone saying that they've got a subscription for Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, that's a really, really interesting business model because they used to only sell annual licenses. They've moved to this new world of subscription and they've increased their revenue by 50% just by moving to this model. And I know it's not kind of something that everyone wants to do uh, and if all the creatives all complain about um, this, the subscription model, but from a business perspective, they've done incredibly well. Someone else is saying they've got Amazon, Netflix, 
They've got course subscriptions for coaching um, and a coaching group that they belong to as well. So that's a lovely one. Thanks for sharing that. That's great. Thanks for adding stuff to the, the chat. It's really helpful to, to see that stuff. Okay. So I hope everyone's all right there. Just going to move on to say, so we can set up subscriptions and, and, uh, and models for food and drink and for products. But also what we can do is actually think about if we are a coach or a mentor, or if we sell consultancy services, we can turn our knowledge into learning. And this is a really interesting kind of trend that's happened over the last few months. Uh, this is a new report that's just come out from, from government saying that 36 and nearly 40% of us have used the time in, in lockdown to retrain. So we've all been really focused on that online learning piece. And it says 89% of managers on furlough have used this time to further develop their skills, nearly 90% of us. So my challenge to you is what could you do that could start to create an income out of the knowledge that you have? You might have this stuff written down at the moment in white papers or in um, an FAQ format or on your website as a blog. But actually, if you could turn that into stage by stage and step by step content, either self learnt self taught or live delivery like we're doing today, both of those could have some real value. They could have value to your existing customers. So you could sell a subscription model on top of the, um, the service that you're offering now, or you can create a different brand and put that brand out there and sell onto some of the learning community channels like Udemy and Skillshare and just put them out as individual courses. Again, this is something that's worth trialing, seeing how it works, learning from your mistakes and learning from the good points and just building that up. And I know quite a few consultants now who've got a really good income coming through from just building that kind of basic learning content. So give that stuff a go. If you want to build your own platform for learning, then products like Podia can be really powerful. And those ones en en enable you to have your own website with all of your content on there. And then you can bring subscribers in, you can manage those subscribers and membership levels. And that can be a really helpful way of doing it. It's going to take a bit of stuff. And I challenge you to say anyone can run an online course. And this is my favorite one. It's, it's from the States, but I just love this idea that if you can even t teach um, pilots the, the, their skills via a training course online and via a subscription for a training course online. And the reason I like this one is it's a fixed time frame. So you buy it for 12 months. So it doesn't have to be in perpetuity. It can be during that time. And then one of the things that I, I quite like about these guys is that if you fail the course, you can take it again for free. So the idea of having some kind of limits in place in terms of time frames, but also having a little catch all and the guarantee belt built into that, I think can really help uh, build the credibility of the course. <clears throat> so also, we've got quite a lot of people out there at the moment who are developing content and creating content. And often the problem is when you create content, it's very difficult to monetize it. And we can do that through a fantastic product called Patreon, and I'll show you that in a second. But I just want to share with you this example here of, of, a, of a chap in the, in the Southwest who's a preschool consultant. And in, in essence, during COVID, obviously isn't able to do any work. So I actually started to create some content called Play School TV. And, um, and the content went out far and wide. Parents, um, teachers all loved it and started using it. Um, but what he recognized is he wasn't getting any money back for it. There's no kind of value um, base in that in that relationship. So what he started to do was to use a product, Patreon. And in Patreon, people can pay you a subscription in order to receive next level content. 
So what now he's doing is he's got Play School TV, which is the uh, regular episodes that are going out. And then people pay as a patron to Patreon to receive uh, little templates of uh, activities, ideas to do with your children, and then also ones for teachers where he runs weekly forums and question and answer sessions about how to develop this play way of working and teaching within schools. He now pays his mortgage via Patreon. That's a lovely example of how we can use our knowledge to actually create a really new revenue and income stream that can come through in that way. So I hope you've enjoyed the session. Um, I hope it's been useful and inspiring for you. Before we move on to questions and answers, I just want to kind of give you another little poll and just to get you to reflect on some of the thoughts that we've had today and think about actually what technology do you need to invest your time or your effort or your money into? So if you want to just pop onto the poll and select which one you think you need to spend the most time on, um, I think it's multiple choice, although no, it looks like it's single choice. So if you can just choose maybe the most important one to you, then, uh, then just do that. And whilst you're doing that, if you can also ask a little cue and ask any questions that you'd like, uh, like me to answer. Um, I've worked in the world of digital marketing and web for 20 years, so I'm hoping, hoping that any answer, any question you have, I can give you a, a reasonable answer to. So do please um, put in your questions there, no matter how big or small. That would be lovely. So how are we doing on the poll? We've got 11 people answering. Great. A few more coming through now. That's lovely. Oh, that's interesting. Overwhelmingly, website. Oh, lots more coming through now. That's great. Great. I'll just give you a few more seconds just to kind of pick those up. Lovely. Okay. So what it looks like is, again, overwhelmingly your website. I think that's so important. And if you are one of those people that feels a bit embarrassed when you tell people to have a look at your website, um, then this is the time now, particularly through August, to actually spend investing in that. Just put it through Uber Suggest, get other people to look at it and tell you what they think is wrong with it. And so that it becomes a website you're really proud of. There's the next one down from that is actually social media channels. And I think that's a really interesting one. That's one that we all kind of don't give enough time to, but it's what we all spend most of our time on. So using that as the opportunity to think about developing a social media plan now for September through to Christmas would be a really powerful piece to do. So I would urge you, September is always the time we start planning for Christmas sales. So now is the perfect opportunity to do that stuff. There's a few people that are talking about online learning platforms as well. That's a great opportunity. Start with Skillshare and Udemy. Give those a go before you then invest into a bigger platform. Some there on video conferencing as well, so that's an important one. Payment platforms is the next one down from that. So that's really, really useful. Great, so I've got a few, a few questions here, if I may. So if I just move on to the Q&A page. My little button, just bear with me a second now. So I've got a question here that looks a good one. Uh, someone's saying, at the moment working on education in the beauty industry, still in progress. The interest is, do I need my personal online presence to build relevancy and trust for my potential buyers? Question. So what I would suggest is that what the most important thing is for you to build your brand reputation online first and there's a, a great thought that goes through now with experts is the idea of get your website and your domain name up as quickly as you can because it takes three to four months for google to really start to understand what the business is about so don't launch the website and launch the brand at the same time get the website live add the content to it build that content build that reputation 
get other people to link to your website so Google starts to see that you're serious about the content and, and just start building that up before you launch. People won't find your domain for quite a while. So feel confident in getting it live and getting it going. Also though, a little tip, think about the domain name you're gonna buy. If your brand is quite a, 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 a non-descriptive phrase, if it was blue sky beauty, for example, then it doesn't tell anyone that what that's particularly about. So you might want to have one that says blue sky beauty skills training, for example, so that it has a part of it that relates to the description of what it is against the brand name. I hope that makes sense to you, but it's a really useful thing to do. And you might want to buy two or three domains that relate to that and link them all back to your website. So I hope that's helpful. Got one here, what's the best way to market research? Um, what people are interested in learning? Really good question. One of the things to do is to go on to Skillshare and Udemy and look at the most popular courses. See, so for your particular sector, I don't mean generally what the most popular courses are, but for your sector, see which ones people are looking at. There's also a brilliant website called BuzzSumo. And on that website, you can type in a keyword phrase and it will give you the most popular content that's out there at the moment that relates to that phrase. So it's a really useful way of starting to just get a sense of actually what are people talking about, what is connecting with people, and then give that a go. Don't forget, you can create content once and repurpose it many, many times across courses. So don't think that you just build one question once, or sorry, one course once, and then that goes out in that linear way. You could build five or six or eight courses from the same content. So be brave with that and start to repurpose it in whichever way you want. Someone else has got a question there. How crucial are my social platforms? How crucial are my social platforms to have high numbers of followers to be more successful in online sales? Good question. From the start, to be successful in online sales, there is a bit of a process, a really good website. There is no point getting people to come to your website if they don't trust it. Because if they don't trust it, they're not gonna buy. So get a good website, get good content on that website, get email marketing right, get your SEO right, your Google rankings right, then worry about social. So that's a great kind of way, a great kind of pyramid that you can start looking at to think about this stuff. Still keep going with social and still build it up, but really until we've got those foundations right, it's not really worth doing it too much. I would though encourage you during all of that process to use paid advertising during that time. You might want to use a bit of pay-per-click on Google, or particularly if you're B2C, business to consumer, look at a bit of Facebook advertising. You can do it really well tailored, but you could then test again, test and fail, test that market between what you're putting out there as an advert and who are buying from you. And we've had some really successful small businesses working that process through again and again to the point which they really know what marketing message works and then stop paying. Stop paying and then start using those messages in the rest of your social content and on, um, on your website and in other places. I hope that's helpful. Any other questions coming through at all? Has anyone else got any questions? I'm just quickly flicking through to check. Any others? Any others? No, last call for any other questions. Okay. Well, if we haven't got any other questions, I'd just like you to um, pop over to the poll again and, um, and just answer, answer the question. Have you found new ways to sell online today? Um, I hope I hope that you have, but do please uh, do please answer that question, um, and we'll get a sense of that. And also, there's going to be a feedback form link um, put into the chat as well, Lucy. So if you're able to just pop that one in, that would be great. 
But I, I really hope, I genuinely hope today that you have learned something new or that something has just inspired you to give something else a go and to broaden the way that you sell online. So if you, if you have, then I hope that's useful. Yep, we've got a really good response of ways in which um, you've learned today, so that's great. And as I say, please just, if you can, just click on the link that's in uh, the chat now to fill out the feedback form um, so that we can start to, we can carry on improving these events and, and make them useful for you as well. So any last questions before we say farewell today? I don't think there's any others coming through. Again, just a quick reminder to fill out the feedback form. If you're able to, that would be really helpful. And all that's left for me to say is thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.